The following is an EHC Media Production. Live from Legacy Studios in beautiful San Diego, California. You're listening to Smart Talk with your host, Moses Marquez. What is up, my beautiful RWP family? This is Moses Marquez, and just like the announcer guy says, this is Smack Talk. I am coming to you. From the beautiful San Diego, California. Not so beautiful right now. We are getting a bit of rain. Something we don't see here often. It's nice. So I do apologize if uh, you do hear the rain in my background. I am recording live from Legacy Studios in my Subaru. Because I have a Legacy. I do love this car. (laughs) So again, I do apologize for any additional noise. Want to go ahead and do a couple cool things here. Uh, Just really quickly want to plug my other show, the New Japan Show, all things New Japan Pro Wrestling. For those who watch Wrestle Kingdom 12, want to hear my views, I have my latest episode. It's up and live on our YouTube channel, RWT Raw Talk. Uh, I believe that's what it is. So, go ahead, go give us a check. This video will take you to that website, and hopefully you've subscribed to our channel. Hopefully you're liking my videos. Hopefully you're leaving us some comments. You know, doing the great Samaritan thing that you do. So, but really quickly, about my Major League show, or the Major League show, excuse me. Just want to give a heads up. The weekend of Royal Rumble weekend, it will already be a stacked weekend as it is because we will have NXT TakeOver on top of the four-hour Royal Rumble being told it's going to be four hours like all the big shows are. Uh, But New Japan will be holding two shows in Sapporo, Japan. It's going to be the New new Beginning is the name of the pay-per-view, and this is going to have some very big title matches at hand. I will make an update video to go along with this whole tangent of mine to give a further in-depth feel of what's going on. I'll go through the card, let you guys know how those feuds began, where I see they're going, and I guess give you a little bit of my predictions. Um, It is going to be a two-day show. They are going to be holding some matches that are hopefully going to grab a lot of attention uh, on this big wrestling weekend. But this is Smack Talk, and we do talk SmackDown live here. So let's go ahead and let's leave the Major League show for another day. Let's jump right in to SmackDown live, live from Birmingham, Alabama. So AJ Styles is introduced by Renee Young, and they are having an interview in the ring. Renee asks uh, AJ if the handicap match at the Royal Rumble is fair. AJ says he takes pride in everything he does in the ring. And if he knew it was gonna, if he was going to be taken seriously, he would not have sarcastically said he wanted a handicap match. AJ says, "Is there a chance I could lose my title? Yes, but there's a chance I will beat the crap out of Sammy and Kevin." Renee asks again. He didn't answer my question. Do you believe this match is fair? AJ says, "Do I think it's fair? No, I don't think it's fair. But life, Renee, isn't fair." He says, yes, they have victories against singles victories against me, but that doesn't mean that they deserve title matches. Separately, I would fight them both. I would fight them both in one night. Renee asks, do you think Daniel Bryan is playing favorites with them? AJ says, I don't know if Daniel Bryan is playing favorites with anyone. I don't know where his head's at. That's not my problem. That's his problem. Then Renee asks, do you think Shane is playing favorites? AJ says, I'm not going to point fingers. He doesn't want to be in the middle of what Daniel and Shane are. AJ, and then he says, I'm already in the middle of the whole Sammy and Kevin thing. AJ says he has to retain his title 
at the Royal Rumble so he can prove that this is the house that and age and sorry Kevin Owens music hits out comes Sammy and Kevin to interrupt the man that built Smackdown Live or built the house that is Smackdown Live AJ Styles so as AJ is trying to finish his statement like I said Kevin Owens and Sammy Zayn come out and of course Kevin and uh, Kevin's looking all mad and Sammy, of course, is a big old happy guy. That's his gimmick right now. He's crazy happy, but he's a heel. Kevin says, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the phenomenal AJ Styles. Or can we call you the regretful AJ Styles? Or the AJ Styles who put his foot in his mouth last week and now is trying to take it back. Sammy says, yep. Kevin says, it's impossible for two to beat, for two to beat one. It's impossible for one guy to beat two. Excuse me. And heaven doesn't give miracles to people like you. You have no chance of leaving as champion after the Royal Rumble. Sami Zayn. Yep. Kevin says after the Rumble, we will be the first ever co-WWE champions. We will turn the house that AJ Styles built into the Kevin and Sami show. Or the Sami and Kevin show. We're going to do whatever we want. Yep. And this whole thing keeps going, and they end up starting a yep, champ, yep, 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 surprisingly got a following, and then here comes the money. Money talks, out comes Shane McMahon. Shane says he doesn't think that it's fair that AJ Styles has a handicap match for the title at Royal Rumble. Says it baffles him why Daniel Bryan is letting you two yep, yep heads get a shot at the title. But he's my general manager, and I back his decision. Shane says he likes the idea of a handicap match. He says, so how about one tonight? How about Sammy and Kevin team up to take on the team of Shinsuke Nakamura, the Viper Randy Orton, and he goes to confirm with some young child, the phenomenal AJ Styles. That young child has some power in this company, more than we do. Shane heads to the back and meets right there by Daniel Bryan in the career position. Says he likes the handicap match. They shake hands. He walks away. And what was a very awkward moment in a very interesting place. If you're not a real wrestling fan, you don't know what the gorilla b- position is. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, a lot of stuff goes down right there. So, But, I mean, this was an awkward interaction. Uh, it was an awkward way to put the match together. But AJ and Kevin and Sammy, they always do good work when they're on the mic together. I enjoyed this opening promo. So, speaking of things I probably didn't enjoy... I know I'm backtracking because I said I enjoyed the opening thing, but I did not really enjoy this match, this next match. But it happened, and I will give it to you guys. And that's Becky Lynch versus Ruby Riot, And Charlotte and Naomi get an entrance to be at ringside for Becky, but all three members of the Riot squad come out together. That was the first thing that peeved me. I didn't know if this was... I thought this was a three-on-three. I really did. I was like, oh, cool, all three of these girls, this is awesome. It's going to be a six-man. No, it's not going to be a six-man. It's going to be, we get interested because we're stars and we're going to hang out right here, but Sarah Logan and Liv Morgan, you guys are going to walk out with Ruby Wright and watch her get her ass kicked. Like, sure, why not? So, Becky's dominating the match early on, and then Sarah Logan tries to get involved by grabbing her foot, but Becky don't play that shit, throws Ruby out of the ring, and we head to the commercial break. When we come back from the commercial break, Becky remains in control, but Ruby is able to slow her momentum down with a chin lock. Becky starts to regain her momentum. A- uh, Ruby is able to slow it down with some counters, but as she's going for the right kick, Becky turns it into the disarmor and she picks up the win. And this is another loss for Ruby Riot after she came on the scene and they started beating up people. Um, I don't get it. Okay, I don't understand what's really going on here. Like, are we building these ladies or are these just some ladies? Okay, because if they're just some ladies, then like you're really okay. Liv Morgan, I'm not tripping on. You can waste her all you want. She can, she should be back in NXT. Okay, Ruby Riot, I think you could use her a little better. And Sarah Logan, that's fucking crazy Mary Dobson. Okay. She's a lot better wrestler than they're giving her credit to be, than they're giving her credit for, and they need to let her shine in some sort of way. 
Stop making the division about four people and make it about your whole division. That's the problem. That's why Lon is not over. That's why Tamin is not over. That's why Carmella is barely over. Everybody needs to shine. Plain and simple. And that goes for what's going on on Raw too. So we cut to a uh, video package of Becky Lynch outside signing autographs. And there's a crazy fan. And he's like, hey, Jimmy Uso, 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 it's crazy dude with a big ass beard or whatever. I was like, I've seen some fans like that when I go to the sports arena for a couple WWE shows. There's a handful of fans like that. Well, this crazy fan's asking for, is, is asking for her to come here. Like, come, please come here. Want to take a picture or some bullshit. So the fan turns out to be Sami Zayn. And he doesn't want an autograph. He wants a partner. And it's the redheads are going to tag together because they're redheaded. That's legit the only reason I see why these guys are together. She was crazy excited, though. Hey, whatever. So it's the Extinction versus the Bludgeon Brothers. And we do a little video thing of um, Fashion Files, which now streams on WWE.com. And um, they were talking about... Oh, the, the Ascension was like, oh, so Brizongo, you guys are going to come join us by the ringside because we're best friends, right? He's like, ooh, yeah, about that. We got a match with New Rusev Day. Good luck, guys. You're going to win, which they did not. So the Ascension starts off hot attacking the Bludgeon Brothers, but the Bludgeon Brothers, of course, like last week, no sold any attacks on that on them. And they're able to regain momentum quickly. Harper goes and kicks Connor off the apron. They hit the splash into the corner, then they, then they double sit out power bomb for the win. On to Victor. Connor is trying to get back into the ring to tend to Victor, but the Bludgeon Brothers attack Connor, lay him out with a double crucifix slam or whatever you want to call it, and that's that. Um, that's great. They're going to tear through the division, is what it looks like, but it's time to move on. Okay, no more Brizongo. No more. Have them beat the New Day. I don't know if you want to let them beat the New Day right now. I don't know what to do with these guys. You're either going to push them into the main event thing or you're going to let them squander around with these guys, which is only going to kill their gimmick. Okay? These guys need to be on the fucking rise immediately. Get past Rumble. Let these guys get a title match. Or, you know, or put them in like a Fatal 4-Way or something with the rest of the tag teams. Winner of that, you know, is the fucking number one contender. If they don't win number one contender, they don't win number one contender. But I think it would be stupid. So, no commercial break, no going to the back. Right after this match, Bobby Roode comes out to watch the qualifying match between Zack Ryder and Mojo Rawley. As Bobby Roode's coming out, Corey says on commentary, Alabama, give me a hallelujah. And Saxon, of course, he's like, hallelujah. And I love Corey for this. Not you, Saxton! It was awesome. Corey Graves is the best commentator we have right now on the main roster because Morrow and Nigel are killing it in NXT. I love those guys. But my man Corey Graves ain't too a shabby. So again, it's Zack Ryder taking on Mojo Rawling. Ryder hits a drop kick early, but Mojo's energy is just too much for Zach as he's able to immediately come back in and take some good control. Zach is able to go. Uh, Zach is going for the Broski boot, but Mojo rolls out of the ring. Mojo is able to regain the momentum as he sends Zach Ryder shoulder first into the corner post. Then he hits a full speed elbow to pick up the victory. He will then take on Bobby Roode. My guess is next week in the semifinal for the U.S. title tournament. Quick match. Him and Rude had a stare down. Either Mojo wins this thing or he's a waste. So here's my dilemma with the whole situation. Either Mojo wins this thing or he's a waste. It looks like he's probably going to end up being a waste. Maybe one of those guys who should go back down to NXT. Might be best for his career. Two. He goes to the finals and loses. You give him some credibility. Um, who he loses to is the issue. It's obviously going to probably be gender. So. I mean, you can have him lose to gender. And then they can regain. A, they can rekindle a feud. 
that started last year's WrestleMania when he got eliminated by Mojo and Gronk. I mean, I'm just playing off of what I got here, guys. I am, okay? Or Xavier Woods can win, and I don't know. Like I said, I like the idea of Xavier Woods being U.S. champ. I think that'd be awesome. I also think that if they don't give the belt to Bobby Roode, then Bobby Roode is just going to squander away. But at the same time, I, I, I similarly think the same thing about Mojo. But I think Mojo has that ability of being able to go to the finals, gain some credibility, doesn't have to win, and that's all that matters. Is he, gained some credi- he gained some credibility, and he's now somebody who's somewhat legit in the business. So we go to the back where the modern-day Maharaja, Jinder Mahal, is standing behind, my guess is an... Uh, Indian flag, and he talks about how 2017 was his year, and he plans on beating Xavier Woods, saying the new day is a fad, and the modern day Maharaja is forever. We have another video package after the commercial break, of course, where Natalia finds out her partner is Shinsuke Nakamura, as she's trying to take a selfie, he's standing in the background doing his crazy pose guy. So... He walks up to her and he's like, a meow. And she's like, oh my God, are you my partner? And he's like, a meow. So he likes cats. She likes cats. She also loved the fact that she doesn't have to team with Sami Zayn. She was mad excited about that. Good for her. So out come Shelton, Benjamin, and Chad Gable to do their promo about the mockery that was the officiating last week on SmackDown Live. And their tag title match. Chad says, do any of you know what it takes to be a winner? The hours of training and the neglect of fam- neglecting a family and friends to take the risk and see if your life means anything? Well, do you know what it means to be champions? Do any of you? And he got booed. Shelton says, just because the rolling, just because Alabama Rolling Tide won the national championship last night doesn't make any of you winners. And Georgia was robbed due to a bad ref call. Just like law, just like us, we lost our title match to bad officiating. Chad says he beat the Usos last week, and a, and another ref came, showed up, and took our victory away. Chad says the ref came down and says he was jealous because he's not a winner and he stole. He's not a winner and he stole our dream. They say a crime has been committed, and they demand justice. We are here to set the tag titles free. And Chad calls out the generic referee number two down to the ring to explain his actions. But instead of this generic referee number two, it's none other than the general manager of SmackDown Live, Daniel Bryan. Daniel says he understands why you, when you work so hard for something that it's taken away from you. Says when you start attacking management, though, I have an issue. He reminds him that all referee decisions are final. Shelton says exactly. Last week he rose our hands. Last week he crowned us champions. And Daniel says, yeah, uh, Daniel says yes, but he found out that he made a mistake and he needed to make it right. And we stand by him when he did that. He says, but and then the thing was, you didn't win the match. You pinned the wrong Uso. And so uh, Chad says, well, what do we have to do? Do we have to beat them in one night? And he's like, He's always going to have to wrestle him twice when out, and Daniel says, that's a great idea. You're a genius, Chad. That's it. At the Royal Rumble, it's going to be you guys versus the Usos for the, <coughs> excuse me, for the SmackDown Live tag titles in a two out of three falls match. And I think that's going to be a pretty good match. You're going to give them plenty of time to shine, plenty of time to go through it. Hopefully that's a better match than some might think. I think it's going to be pretty okay. So we head to the back where AJ and Orton are talking, and, AJ, and uh, AJ's like, "So, do you want to go over game plan? You're just gonna RKO everything that's in, you know, in a walking, in walking distance." All right, cool, good talk. And as he's trying to walk out, uh, Orton says, "AJ, I need you to trust me when I say we're on the same page tonight. But when I win the Rumble, my eyes are on the title. Whether you have it or somebody else has it, I'm coming for it, and I'll take it at WrestleMania." Nakamura shows up. Just as cool guy as he is, he goes up. He says, not too fast. Too sweets the belt. And then he just walks away. So my pick for the Rumble 
and has been my pick for a smidge bit of time now is I think um, excuse me I'm sorry I think Shinsuke Nakamura is going to win I think they're going to take that they're going to use that momentum to copy the Wrestle Kingdom 10 match that was uh, a couple years ago before AJ came to the uh, came to the US in the Rumble um, and I think they're going to allow that to hopefully be a stepping stone to actually get Nakamura over in the proper way. So then we're going to get to Brizongo taking on Rusev Day. Aiden English and Rusev. So before the match, Aiden English sung a song to announce that he, that they would win the, the Rusev Rumble on Rusev Day. And this was a pretty back and forth match. Um... Aiden English was in the for the majority of the time. Uh, Fandango got a little bit of a hot tag. He was able to take control of the match, and then Rusev got a hot tag and just started laying everybody out. Um, Rusev was going for uh, the accolade when uh, Tyler Breeze comes in to break it up. He eats a Machka kick. As he eats a Machka kick. Fandango rolls up Rusev. They pick up the one, two, three upset victory in what looked very familiar, somewhat similar to what happened last night when Titus O'Neil pinned. I want to say Sheamus, and they beat the bar in an upset victory. So backstage, Shane let Brian, uh, let Daniel Bryan know that they will not, that they are not on the same page, and called his decision making um, irrational. Shane wondered if he was okay. Brian asked what he uh, what he meant, and Shane says Brian may have a lot going on in his life, but could be coming off as unstable. You know, he's got a kid. He's away from his family. Brian figured he could say the same about Shane, especially considering his genes. Brian said Shane has made irrational decisions in the past, and it, you're and is likely to do so again. Brian has calm. It was calm and cool as he said this. Shane says they would have agreed to disagree and left. And then, of course, we got another 25-year anniversary for Raw promo where it was advertising the Godfather, Brother Love, Boogeyman, Teddy Long, Ted DiBiase, John Laurinaitis, Sergeant Slaughter, all for the Raw 25 show. Stone Cold Steve Austin has also been mentioned. I've heard Edge, possibly Beth Phoenix. Um, it's going to be a big nostalgia show. Hopefully it's going to be something really worth watching. Uh, the Raw 1000 was a great show, but I don't think, I don't think this show is going to touch it. So then we get to the main event of the evening, which is the three on two handicap match. It's AJ Styles, Randy Orton, Shinsuke Nakamura taking on Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Pretty much for the majority of the match, the baby faces were in full control. Um, and then at the beginning... It was too much for Sammy and Kevin, and they started to walk up the ramp. And as they were walking up the ramp, Shane comes down and says, Whoa, 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 what are you guys doing? This is a no count out match. Restart the match. And so they restart the match. And the heels jump the uh, the faces jump the heels. So basically is Nakamura or I want to say it was Nakamura and AJ just jumped down Sammy and Kevin's throat and just started beating on them. And then we go to break, and as we come back from the fr- uh, break, Sammy's in control of uh, excuse me, Sammy's in control of AJ. The crown trotted for AJ as Shane had um, AJ Styles in a headlock. Then uh, or, uh, Owens got a tag, applied the headlock, and the trend and the crowd continued to chant for AJ Styles. AJ Styles comes back with a fireman carry neckbreaker, the Hoshi Kuroshi, whatever the heck you want to call it. Yushi Kuroshi. Then he made a hot tag to Randy Orton, who hit uh, clotheslines and power slams to Sami Zayn. As Orton ran wild, Orton jumped in and hit Orton with a chair to pick up the DQ. Orton gives chair shots to Styles and Nakamura to start cleaning house. <coughs> Excuse me. Shane comes out and makes it a no disqualification match. Styles attacked Owens with a chair and then followed him up the ramp. And then on, and then to the, and then all the way to the back. This left Sami Zayn all by himself, with Randy Orton and Nakamura left by his side. 
They tossed him into the post, then Orton nailed him with some steel steps. Orton then cleared the announce table. Or actually, first he threw Sammy over the announce table, did minimal moving of anything, and then back sl- uh, backslammed or gave a, a backdrop to Sami Zayn onto that table. I want to say he landed on a monitor or something. Something metal was underneath him. That was for sure. It hurt. Orton tosses Sammy back into the ring. Nakamura nails the Kinshasa. Orson finishes him with an RKO. They pick up the victory as AJ and Owens are in the back doing their thing. Nakamura and Shinsuke are soaking in the awesome Birmingham, Alabama crowd as the show ends. So for this match, this was kind of just like a blow-off match. This was their way of letting the faces shine and and everybody liked the faces and don't worry about what the bad guys are doing. They're going to get their butt kicked and they got their butt kicked and that's what that was. That's what this was tonight. Um, I don't see a title change coming at the Royal Rumble. I think one might cost the other or like Sammy is going to cost Kevin or Kevin's going to cost Sammy. And it's because, you know, I agree. They both want One of them wants to be the period champion, not both of them, not a co-champion. Um, that or possibly, Ke- or possibly Daniel Bryan or, or Shane McMahon is going to somewhat interfere and cause some issues. Um, like I said, we have been noticing Daniel act a smidge more on the healer side. Daniel, Shane, for sure, has slowly turned into Mr. McMahon, not just Shane McMahon. So, I mean, that's that for SmackDown Live. This was a show that you could have easily skipped or watched it all on Facebook Live and been just as caught up. Um, it did build the big main feud, but uh, at the same time, I felt like it kind of left everything in in the balance. But this show was mainly about making sure you know who's in the Rumble. You know who's going to be in the Mix Max Challenge. And, you know, where a couple of things are going. So, like I said, it it, it was a show. I'm not super, wasn't super fond of it. I, I did enjoy it. The main event was pretty okay. I mean, it's, it is what it is. Um, I'm not... Yeah, it was SmackDown, guys. So, um, yeah, um, unfortunately, I did not get any questions from you guys, and I'm gonna try to keep try to remember to always post that. I do like getting questions from you guys. I do love answering them. Um, but yeah, uh, as for the U.S. title picture, uh, like I said earlier, I, I, there's like three options. It could be either rude. It could be, it could be rude. It could be. Xavier Woods, or it could be a gender, and I think it's leaning more towards gender, and it's either leaning more towards gender, or it's going to be, or it's going to be Bobby Roode, no, it might be Bobby Roode and Jinder Mahal, and I believe Jinder Mahal is going to win, because Dolph Ziggler might screw Bobby Roode, yeah, that's what I'm going with. As for the tag titles, like I said, I think I think it's going to be a pretty good match. It's going to be really fun to watch. I do see us having new tag team champions in Shelton Benjamin and Chad Gable. Even the mom- the momentum for the Usos is pretty high. I think new champs would be not ideal, but I think would be welcomed. It would be welcomed. And then hopefully we'll be introduced to some new tag teams uh, come Rumble time, hopefully some new superstars come Rumble time, but we'll see. You know what I mean? We'll see where it goes. We'll see how it goes. So yeah. Okay, guys, I'm gonna uh, go ahead and leave GB. I've rambled on uh, quite enough. Going to quickly plug my man Brian Green. His show When XT should be coming at you Thursday, if I'm not mistaken. Go ahead and watch NXT tomorrow, guys. Give him, send him your questions. He loves to answer them on the show. I will hopefully have this up in the morning for you guys, so hopefully you can listen to it at work on your way. All that fun stuff. Again, guys, go visit our YouTube page. We have all of our shows on there from WinXT, Smack Talk, The Major League Show, Ring Psychology, Edgar Ventura's new show, our new podcast guy, War on Raw, which I want to say he's going to start here very soon, uh, Hell in a Podcast, 
We got it all, guys. Come visit us. Come subscribe to us. Give us a thumbs up. Let us know how you feel in the comment section. All that fun stuff. All right, guys. I'm going to let you go. This has been Moses Marquez with Smack Talk. I will catch you around the bend, boys and girls. The Royal Rumble is just a couple weeks away. Let's hope for some new teams. Maybe War Machine goes to the main. Maybe Ricochet goes to SmackDown. Let's hope. Let's pray. Let's get our fingers crossed, guys. We'll catch you later. See ya. Shit, you,